Hi guys, here am I again, Jonathan Makessa. As you probably all know, I am so obsessed with biotechnologies. And today I want to talk about adjuvant. If you've watched our previous video, then you will know that adjuvants are a component that I often use in vaccines, especially nucleic acid vaccines, to increase their effectiveness. And there's actually no need to be afraid of them. But before we dive into that, let's first talk about the immune system. Every day in our usual activities, we come in contact with some pathogens. They are bacterial and viruses that can cause illnesses. But luckily for us, our body has a natural defense system that we call the immune system. But how does it work? The immune system can be split into two parts, the innate defense system and the adaptive defense system. The innate defense system begins with external membranes such as skin and different mucuses that separate what's in inside from what is outside. But sometimes if the pathogens can pass through the barrier and enter inside of our organism, we have internal defenses such as phagocytes and antimicrobial proteins, lysosomes and other entities that can find the intrigues and kill them. We also have killer cells, natural killer cells that could find those, sometimes it could be cancer cells or viruses or bacteria to target them and kill them. Then come the adaptive defense system. This system is a bit more sophisticated because it creates a specific response to a specific type of antigen. And this is made possible because of proteins called antibodies. Antibodies are particular proteins that are able to target, recognize antigens, tag them, and call the cells that will come to kill them. It could be phagocytes or natural killer cells. But sometimes these antibodies have limits. That is when the vaccines step in. And as I said before, some vaccines use adjuvants to increase their efficiency. So, adjuvants are chemical substances that increase the effectiveness of vaccines, especially those who have a low immunogenicity. And how do they do that? Well, there are several mechanisms of adjuvants. The first one is precipitation. One of them is the aluminum potassium sulfate, or alum. The alum precipitates an antigen and doing so, it increases its size and makes possible the contact between the antigen and the phagocyte. And besides that, by precipitating the antigen, these adjuvants create inflammation at the size of injection so that the macrophages and all the B and T cells are alarmed and they could come to the size of injection to kill the antigens. Doing so, it increases the immune response. Apart from precipitation, there is another mechanism. And here we have the famous friends, incomplete and complete adjuvants. It's IFAA and CFA. Well, the IFAA contains antigen in an aqueous solution, mineral oil, and an emulsifying agent. The complete friends adjuvant or CFA it contains all that, but in addition to all these elements, it has a mycobacterial that can release a substance called muramide dipeptide. This molecule can activate macrophages, and we all know that activated macrophages contain a high level of MHC class 2 and B7 that can enhance the immune response. And this way is how adjuvants can increase the immune response of vaccines that have a low immunogenicity. Thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this video. So subscribe in our channel for more.